Hi guys, so this morning we're going to look at how to work with sublimation and cutting design bundles and kits in Affinity Designer. Now it's an Affinity Designer desktop or iPad tutorial but it's also suitable in some cases for use with Affinity Photo. So let's have a look. The craft market is a fabulous area to work in and designing for the Cricut silhouette or screen printing crafts is just one facet of this. But if you aren't a trained designer, where do you get your designs to work with? That's where Affinity Designer, Photo and Publisher hold their own. They're just the right price and just as versatile as the huge commercial behemoth that we all know and don't love. Affinity Designer excels in handling SVG type files and in fact it handles all the file types that are used by that other software package. Well, in the main. Of course, there are even free software packages available. So where do we get our designs if we can't create them ourselves? And sometimes you just want a design to use for a piece of work that you're doing. So let's have a look at where we get them. Now logos are an interesting area to work in. So let's begin by looking at wedding invitation design, which is ideal for Affinity Designer. Now the one I'm using is an Elegance four-fold wedding invitation laser cut template. It consists of SVG vector designs, now it's suitable for Silhouette, Design Edition, Cricut Explorer, Adobe Suite, Inkspace, Corel Draw, and lots more, including Affinity Designer, of course. Now the DFX cutting files, Affinity doesn't deal with DFX, so we can forget that one right off. EPS, now you'll always come across EPS vector files. Every time you go on one of these sites and look for their commercial EP vector files, you'll come up with EPS, Encapsulated Postscript, which is in effect a vector file. And of course AI files, which are Adobe Illustrator. Now Affinity Designer quite happily opens EPS and AI files and SVG files. Now this kit, this, this uh, wedding invitation design, is available from Envato Elements. Now I, I really find that, I avoided Envato Elements for a long time, but I really find that having all of your design needs in one space is really fantastic. It saves you so many hours of wandering around the internet, looking for dodgy graphics, things that purport to be free but really aren't. But with this one, um, you can pay a subscription. Of course, it's a subscription, ver um, a subscription site. But there are thousands of design elements there. Millions, I'd suggest. Um, graphics, photos, videos, um, how to do it, all sorts of things. But anyway, I won't go on about that because that's not what this is about. And the link that you can see there, if you haven't copied it down, um, is in the description for the video below where this video is showing on YouTube. Now the downloaded graphics set, when you download this and expand it, I put the archive into a folder where I can find it easily. We're interested in the types AI, PSD and SVG. These are the ones I know will open in Affinity Designer. <coughs> Excuse me, in Affinity Designer. And they will, by the way, open in Affinity Photo and Publisher. So you get the best of both worlds. You can put them straight into a Publisher document if you wanted to. So let's have a look and see where we're going with these. Now the graphics set in detail. You can see the folder there. I've expanded the set, the Elegance Wedding Card Design. Don't worry about the DFX ones, we can't use them. However, we can use the others. You should be aware that not all available design sets contain the same sort of image types, because these are sold through Envato by 
are private designers, so they won't always have the same types of files. But you have the opportunity to look around and you can, because if you've subscribed to Envato, you can download them, look at them and see if they're any good to you. We're particularly interested in the AI types and the SVG types for designer because we should be able to use the SVG types in, for example, Cricut Design Space. And that's where we want to be able to put them. And in, in this exercise, that's where I'll be putting them. So, let's have a look. The first thing I notice is the text. Now, when I expand that file, and that files the Elegance Wedding Card Number 1 SVG. So it's the first file in the set. I click on that, load it into Designer, and you'll see it's expanded in the, in the um, layer list on the right-hand side. Now there's a lot of text there. You can see the letter A down in the layers list. That indicates it's a text layer. That means that Cricut will not import this as a true SVG file if you export it from Designer. Export it as an SVG and it won't work in Cricut. And I suspect a few others. Nor will it import it correctly if you just try with the original file. So you may think, oh beauty, I'll just import the original SVG into Cricut. Sorry, it won't like it. So how do we fix it? Now this is an example of the people who create these SVG files aren't creating them for Cricut. They're creating them for design software like Affinity Designer. And you can see that it loads it quite happily into Affinity Designer. But so far not into design space. Why is that? Because we have to convert the text layers to curves or vector layers. So select all the layers that aren't curves and then go to select layers and convert to curves in Designer. Now you can see over there each single letter in that set, I've got it expanded slightly, is now a curve or curves. Curves being more than one curve. That's fairly straightforward. Now if I export that as an SVG file, Cricut will load it. It's now pure SVG or a vector file and you can edit it as such. Export it as an SVG and Cricut, for example, will now upload it. Whereas the original file, it wouldn't because it was a mixture of non-SVG elements and SVG elements. Now the background colour there is black, but that's a function of Cricut. And you can, once you've uploaded it into the design space, you can quite happily colour that all you like. Now I might add that the background of that lettering is a gradient. And Cricut doesn't import gradient images. It doesn't convert them to SVG and so it puts black in its place. Now you can put what you like in there. That's only a minor irritation. Now the AI file type. Opening the AI file type, you're presented with missing fonts. You can find them or ignore them for now. But let's continue for now. Now you can go and find those fonts if you like, add them to your system, and that way you have them there. But in this case it won't matter. You can see the yellow, green, blue background to that lettering. That's a, uh, that's a gradient. And Cricut's design space won't work with gradients. You can't vectorize a gradient, in other words. It's not just a cricket problem. As with the previous file type, the SVG file, the text layers are not curves, therefore not vector types. But in this case, I decided to hide them by deselecting them. <coughs> Excuse me again. To end up with the design only, that is the only true vector part of the image so far. Now I can see the immediate potential there. Can you? because I've hidden all the text. Who wants that? You can put your own design in the middle of that vector pattern. And that will upload, once you've exported it to an SVG, that will upload quite happily to your cutting software and design space. 
Now finally, the last two types. In this set we have the PSD and the JPG files. Now these are pixel types and not SVG types. These will load up to software like Cricut, but your options there will have their usual limitations. In other words, you won't be able to resize it without pixelating if you go larger. Of course you can make them smaller, but you can't go larger. And you can use them in many other settings as well. Great for sublimation, things like that. Of course that text there, you can put whatever text you like in there of course. Print them to paper, print them to the sides of mugs, whatever you like. Now the second set I've got showing on there is I love you to the mountains and back. I find that a fairly odd expression but you may love it. <laughs> but that's another design set made up as you can see of PNG, PSD, AI, DFX, EPS and PDF files. A whole lot of them. And you can, you can do with those the same as you did with the previous SVG files. Now there are thousands of images. You can in fact source all of your design requirements for the one location. This set is like the first set. A lot of different file types, but you still have to be aware of what you are doing. If there are elements in the file that are not vector curves, you will have to convert them or remove them for it to work as an SVG. You can see I've got a, a clear background there and you've got the black articles. Now have a look in the right hand side in the layers panel. You've got layers, a curve, a rectangle. No, you'll have to convert that to a curve. Another curve, another curve and another rectangle. Sorry, you'll have to convert that to a curve. You just go up to the command um, options in the toolbar and select convert to curves and there's your curve. Now you've got text there, mountain and back, mountains and so forth. You have to expand those layers and convert them to curves for it to work. Some will convert, some won't. So you have to be careful of that. Your designs may not end up being exactly as you've got there. In other words, you can export that now as an X, as an, sorry, as an SVG, but it may not absolutely convert. And therefore, if your software expects a true SVG, as does Cricut's Design Space, you'll be disappointed. You'll have to edit that file and Remove the parts that aren't curves and put them in by drawing a vector image there for yourself. Not a big problem. Now, finished? That's quite a nice image. <laughs> I love you to the mountains and back. Well, that's interesting. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click on the thumbs up for a like and the bell to be reminded when new videos appear. I really appreciate it.